Okay, you guys, welcome to another episode of Go Bayside, the Saved by the Bell podcast, as you know, where I have a friend come over and watch an episode of Saved by the Bell with me, and then we critically deconstruct it for you, the listener. And today's guest is the lovely and talented Karen Kilgara. <laughs> Hello. Who really did me a solid because she never watched the show when it was on. This is the first full episode you've seen, right? That's exactly right. And, and it changed her life. I'm really different now. I'm definitely a Republican. <laughs> There's all these changes inside of me. Okay, well, the, the episode we just watched uh, is an episode called House Party. Like, it opens in Screech's house, you know, and Zach's there, and the mom, Ruth Buzzy, is like, hey, we're going to Graceland for our anniversary which is a, i think that's a thing people would clown on but like it's a thing i'd do sure. so at first you think what who would do that uh, april and whoever she ever dates again would do that hopefully <laughs> so i'm on board with that and then um yeah so she's giving she's like telling screech what he can and can't do and gives him this like impossibly come like comedic scroll of you know here are the house rules and then he opens it and it's like five feet long yeah there were a lot of um I want to say vaudevillian style. Totally. I say that in like every episode. It's, it's totally hilarious. vaudeville. It's hilarious. It's just, and like there was one thing where they were having a conversation and Zach was standing over to the side and his facial expressions were so over the top. He was like borderline miming where it was like, whoa, like just big <laughs> eyes, big eyes rolling his eyes, right. looking around, shrugging his shoulders. It's so hilarious. It's like, it's, it, they, sh this also, it almost seems like it could be a show that teach English as a second language people. Oh my you know God, I mean? totally. Where it's like you can just read their reactions yeah. to... Yeah, absolutely. I'm confused. Right. My hands are going to go way up in the air. Totally. It's like a lot of that. And then like big long lists and yeah. And it uh, is like nerds. a Looney Tunes. Yeah, it definitely is. And like, so he... So yeah, he's making all these faces when he's giving her the rules. But of course he's Zach. Like he's thinking we're immediately going to break the rules. But Screech is like, you heard what mom said, no parties. Right. And so they cut to school. But he says that kind of looking off at no one. Right. Because he's a <laughs> terrible fucking actor. You're so obsessed. <laughs> I hated Screech it. Is terrible. I, it's like things like that that start to make me insane where like I can't look at. All I can think of is I, this is what I do all the time to make myself unhappy. I just put myself in their shoes of like, if you can't make eye contact with the person you're in a scene with, because right. you're, you're just so fucking goofy that you're just kind of like looking out over there. It's like you, you've just, you, you're stunt cast. Like you've right. been cast in this way where you can, can barely get it together to not, to be okay to be right. on that stage. Like but, it's just so uncomfortable. It's like watching the most uncomfortable adolescent. Yeah. So they, so they're at school and that's when Zach's like, let's have a party anyway. And Screech is like, no, we can't. And then Slater goes, it's okay. We'll have dudes night in. Right. He, he solved that right quick. Mm -hmm. He came right in. He's like, we'll do dude stuff. It'll be great. He's like, I'll leave my kids at home. <laughs> I'll tell my, I'll tell my <laughs> wife I'm, I'll be busy I'm a that night. Old bouncer. Because I'm the oldest teenager of all time. Right. He's disturbing looking. Right. He, um, so, yeah, so he says, we'll do dude stuff. But then Screech catches Violet Bickerstaff checking him out, which is Tori Spelling, as you pointed out. And also, again, in Say by the Bell Land. Of course, it's like slap glasses on somebody and they're a nerd. <laughs> because she is pretty. Yeah, she's beautiful. She's super pretty. Yep. The only thing, again, she's a quote unquote nerd because she's wearing giant glasses. Right. That nobody, even like a nerd, would be like, those are too big. Yeah. But then comes her abusive nerd boyfriend yes. down the steps. And you've mentioned, okay, not abuse is never funny, but how is this, the, this character, let's just, the characteristics of this guy, he's abusive, he's like a raging misogynist, but yet an insane dork. Yeah. They're um, rich. I, uh, yeah, so that, so she comes over and is like, I'm sorry, whatever, and then walks off and doesn't talk to Screech. And then the next thing that they cut to, oh, and then they're all just like, oh my God, he's such a dick. I can't believe what a dick he is to her. And Screech is like, if she were my girlfriend, I would be super cool to her. Now I have to say this. There was a couple moments in there that were very tender when he was talking to her or with, like in that moment, I believed him. Oh, so you were impressed with his skills. He drew me back in a tiny bit. Okay. When he's not trying to be funny. Uh -huh. And he's kind of like a lost nerd at school, trying right. to, trying to navigate because that's the more waters. real, I think, for him, right? And yeah, and it was a little more rested, and it just it was a little more human. Mm -hmm. And I, I came back in, and then the second he had a joke 
which he was face prepping for you in the shop before, out. I was like, this fucking hat <laughs> again. <laughs> So, so it's been a real see roller coaster. Dramatic roles. <laughs> well, that's all you want to see him do. All we dramatic want, work. All anybody wants when they watch a show is to see their own story. They right. want to see something right. they can relate to. So, so yeah. So he after that, they cut back to Screech's house, and that it's dudes' night now. So it's just him and Zach and Slater, and they are in their like socks and tank tops or whatever. That was clearly a, ri- a risky business. Oh, totally. Tip of the hat. Yeah, yeah, like, but they couldn't use the song because exactly. you know they're not going to pay. And they couldn't even use the real Barbara Ann. It was like a weird. I had never get that. I don't know the logistics of it because I always feel like if you can use, they're singing Barbara Ann. Okay, so Barbara Ann, they're singing it, and they, yeah, they're ahead of their time. They got those like striped. Kanye glasses and they're rocking out and then the girls at school were like we got to see what dudes do yeah for dude night so then they cut to them standing in the doorway so basically the girls broke into Screech's house Um, but yeah so they just straight up break into Screech's house standing there whatever the dudes see them and they're momentarily embarrassed because they're like oh you saw singing and dancing but then they're like oh hey how's it going like none of them are like what the fuck are you doing in my house? How'd you get into my house? Right, because in this cast, they don't have time for anybody to make those emotional adjustments. They just right. have to li- <laughs> they just have to line up six abreast again. That's right, all right. they know is right. like, I'm going to be doing this lip sync, and then I have to go line up behind the couch. Right. Those are my two jobs in this scene. Right, and that, I've got to stay conscious of that, yeah. so I don't have the room to be like, what? other emotions. If there was yeah. embarrassment, it was probably genuine. Right, or, like, right. They really were jumping around, so they really are embarrassed. Right. But nervous, because Tori Spelling's there, so He's like, oh, my crush. Was he nervous? Yeah. It, he, like, <laughs> spins her around or something, and, and she hits the Elvis statue. Oh, yeah. It falls and shatters. And then Zach, Zach goes, the king is dead. <laughs> there again. <laughs> so when it shatters, then Screech faints, but then it immediately goes into his dream sequence because, again, he took it so literally when his mom's like, I would die if anything happened to it. So he dreams his mom is dead. Right. So he's trying to glue the statue together, and then, yeah, that's when Ruth, Bu- Ruth Buzzy comes in. Uh, and I did get an email about this to notice, and I did, that there she's flapping her arms, even though she has <laughs> wings. She's got wings. I love it. But she comes in flapping her arms and is like, hey, kid, hi, child. I told you I'd die. Yeah. If I, I, that was just so dark. And then he's like, I'm sorry, mom. And then, yeah, that's when she's like, you got to explain it to this guy. And it's Belding <laughs> as the king, Belding. which I just wrote down blasphemy. Like I was like, Belding is Elvis. No, both angels. And then they fly off, flapping their arms and wings. And then when Screech comes to, we're back at school. And then that's when they're like, it's cool. We'll just buy another Elvis statue. And Lisa and Kelly come back from the mall and they're like, hey, idiots, easier said than done. It's $250, right? (laughs) Right. And of course, they're all teenagers. So we're like, where the fuck are we going to get $250? Right. And then, yeah, then he doesn't. Zach just goes, I got an idea, like into the camera. And then you immediately cut to a poker game. Yeah. Which, yes, I, I was like, who, what teenagers are like, I know, I'm going to hustle him at poker? Like, yeah. How I, is that a thing? It's not even, yeah, it's not even younger kids game or like risk or something that yeah. people would have experience with. It's poker. It's full on poker. The guy at Nerdstrom's wearing like a, vi- a dealer visor. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they have chips. Like I just, <laughs> I never played poker when I was younger. Even if you played a game like it, like say uh, we knew, we got taught 21 at a pretty early age, but we'd never play with chips because chips are like this conceptual idea. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I mean, I guess they were playing for real money, so it made sense for them, but still like chips to you as a kid, you just have to understand what all that kind of I, meant. Completely. And also I would think that they, okay, presumably Zach, this is his idea because he thinks, I guess he thinks because Max is such a nerd, like he doesn't have the street smarts, I guess, that yeah. he has. So he assumes, oh, I'll beat this guy at poker, of course, because he's a nerd. He, so he immediately blows it. He gets <laughs> like, his hand. Yeah, look at this. The, yeah. Everyone's standing behind him. Look at my awesome him. hand, everybody, yeah. which is like, you don't do that because you want him to bet more, dummy. But anyway, so he does that. And then Max Nerdstrom is like, oh, sounds great. Let's bet. So he starts, he's like, I bet all my chips. And then... um. He's like, this is over 250 bucks. And then that's when Zach's like, shit, what are we going to bet? And then he's like, Screech, get your dog. <laughs> and that, yeah, I was like, how much is a dog worth? Well, if you're going to part it out. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's like, that's what I'm saying. Like, how do you. It doesn't make sense. How do you measure? If they got the dog at the pound, isn't it worth $0 technically? I paid 300 bucks for my dog at the pound. Oh, really? 
And then if you just are using the pelt. Zach had four queens. He had four kings. Got to be the first time in the history of poker. The two odds people are at the same table yes. had those hands. Yep. So he wins. And only two people playing. <laughs> and only two people playing. Somehow they both Someone got... didn't shuffle. It was yeah, a brand new deck. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> so yeah, he takes the dog. That just blew... That blows my mind. So he walks out with the dog like, thanks guys. And then of course, you know, Screech is like, what the fuck? But then immediately, like as soon as he walks, Max Nurtrum leaves the house, Screech's mom calls. Right. And they do a split screen. And I, um, yeah, so she's like, hey, I'm having fun, whatever. Let me talk to the dog. And then that's when... This, Screech hands Zach the phone to talk like the dog. Which I actually thought he, I had, I knew, of course. he handled it well? Like everything else in the show, I saw it coming. Right. And I will claim it. I will proudly say I saw a lot of this stuff coming. And uh, yeah, I saw the dog talking like a dog coming. And he didn't make me uncomfortable. He did it with some kind of self-respect. Yes. It It was pretty real. He didn't totally screech out and roll his eyes and do a bunch of stuff. He like, yeah, he kind of, he accomplished it. Right. I was I wasn't unhappy. If I was the director, I would have been like cut print moving on. We're good. <laughs> you nailed it, Zach. <laughs> you nailed the dog on the phone part. You nailed it, but you didn't give yourself away. Right, right. And that's what's important. <laughs> so yeah, so they so that's fine though, and he he convinces her that the dog is still around, they hang up, whatever. Next day, we're at school. Uh Zach and Slater team up to bully up on Nerdstrom in the locker room and they're like what the fuck, man? You took our friend's dog. That is weird. Admittedly, that's pretty weird. The, you took the dog we offered Yeah, in the game. Like, who would really do that? And yeah. then so they get all up in his face, and then Slater slams him into a locker. Okay, can I say this really quick? Yeah. When that scene started, I thought the way they came in and the way like Slater was, co- was like coming at Nerdstrom, and then Zach was like, hey, man, hold on. And I thought that they were doing something They were doing fake. like a bit. It looked like they were doing a bit, but then it never turned out to be that way. So it looked like they were setting something up, whatever. It seemed like another one of Zach's plans. Right. But then it just turned out to really be what was Yeah, happening. I think you're right because I think that too. I think they were doing a bit because I think what at first the plan was to make Nerdstrom think Slater was going to kick his ass. I feel like the whole time Slater knew like, He's not going to actually kick his ass, but we got to make him think you are. But then I think <laughs> but when he slammed him up and then he had a bully alert, like that that huge alarm, and then Belding comes running in, then I think that's when the bid ended because they're like, oh, we really actually can't even threaten to beat him up because he's got this he's crazy got alarm. A watch that's also a bully alert. Yes. Is that a running thing? Did you know no. about that already? No, no, no. That's just in this episode. But Belding runs in and is like, are you okay? And then they convince him to say, like, you know, Zach and Slater are like, yeah, don't worry, we're just horsing around, whatever. And then that's when they go, what do we got to do, Nerdstrom, to get the dog back? And that's when he says, I'll trade you the dog for a, a date with Jesse. The, then there, that moment that was very stuck out to me, because I don't know anything about it, where they were like, she's going to hate that. Let's do it. Yep. So what, is she a big bitch? Or like, she's they don't like, like the her? feminist of the show. Like, literally, she's always getting on Slater's case for calling her babe. So then cut to the max and Zach is like, all right, I got an idea to raise the money. And they're like, what? Have a party. And they're like, what? You fucking idiot. And he's like, no, we're going to charge 10 bucks a head. And then they're like, yes. And he goes, spread the word. Party at Screech's 7 p.m. Now, I'm not a hard partier. Don't go to a lot of clubs. I will say I can't think of anything less appealing or less worth ten dollars than a party at the nerdiest kid in school's house at seven p.m. <laughs> for ten dollars. Yep. In these, I could go to the movies twice for yep. ten dollars. And they, when you know, again, spoiler alert, but when it actually comes around, all they do is dance. All they do is dance. There's no drinks. There's nothing, nothing. extra. I think they. Have, they didn't even move the couch out of the way. They didn't know. It's all as it was in the original scene. And they did hang, they strung up some nice lanterns. I think that's it. I in, didn't see any food, drinks. Indoor lanterns, nothing else. So it was a $10 party to stand around and dance. In Screech's living room that they made no accommodation. Like they moved nothing out of the way. Least appealing party ever. And everybody, he, they go tell everybody and they lose their minds. And yep. it's crowded. Yep. And it's crazy. Yep. So yeah, so they raise all the money for, by having this whack-ass party. <laughs> And then Max shows up in like a stay in a live suit, a white stay in a live suit with Jesse as his date. Yep. Makes Jesse dance with her, him, um, the whole time. And then finally, 
he he was like, I'm not bringing the dog back until Legs dances me all night or whatever. Right. And so they're like, yeah. And then he does. He gets his nerd henchman to come in at like 10 o'clock to bring the dog in. And you're right. It's just a curly haired dude with giant glasses and a bow tie. Nerd! Such a fucking nerd, nerd! right? Nerd! Uh, what a gross nerd. So he brings <laughs> in the dog. And then they give the money to Slater. To go get the run, get the statue at the mall last minute once they get enough after at everybody the, uh, pays at for the statue awesome store party. at the mall. Exactly. The statue comes back. And then, but yeah, the, so the parents get back early. And you're right. Zach's always scheming ahead. He's always two or three schemes ahead of his current scheme. So the mom does, Ruth Buzzy comes in. What the fuck? This looks like a party. And they're like, it is, but uh, da, 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 it's for your anniversary. And then that's when the sign drops, happy anniversary. Brilliant fix. Brilliant fix. However, of course, any, like, I, again, I put myself in these because I think about, okay, what if this is me and my mom comes up? My mom would be like, okay, wait a minute. You kids are throwing a party for our <laughs> anniversary. Like, no fucking way. And then yeah. secondly, she'd be like, I'm home early. Like, you didn't know. Yeah. To when to throw this fake party. But then she couldn't be mad because they literally weren't doing anything. <laughs> they, they, oh, no, unless totally. Unless it's like a footloose town and they're, it's illegal to dance. There's right. nothing. Well, it just, was the, like, just the virtue of having a party. Like, he just right. wasn't supposed to have a party. No parties, no girls. Right. But still, so it was kind of exactly, like. It's like the tamest party, but he is still technically having a party. But it's just the fact that she instantly goes, oh, it's for us. It's for yeah. our anniversary. Like, not at all taken into consideration. Like, what teenagers give a fuck about their parents' anniversary at? Slater comes in, trips, throws the statue. Zach catches it slow mo. just in time. Slow mo, totally slow mo. Awesome. Puts it back on its on its tower. Yep, its column, its pedestal. And then she goes, "There's something wrong with it." And they're like, "Oh shit!" Thinking maybe they got the wrong one or something. And then she just turns it. She goes, "The king likes to look at the kitchen and see me cook." Yeah. And they're like, "Okay." And then da, 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 da. that's it. <laughs> So at the end of the day, everything is saved. Even after 900 schemes, they did it right. Yeah. And it's all, it all wraps up nicely, just like everything did in life in teen years. That's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. When there's, uh, it was exactly like junior high, high school, where everything, there's no pain. No pain. Nothing messy. No consequences. The nerds kind of like were okay and they were protected. And uh, yep. everyone's feelings were very well considered. There was light pimping, but light it pimping. turned out fine. Light pimping and pandering. Just some light <laughs> grab ass um but did that did the nerd get did get sent out of the party yeah but remember he goes i'm not leaving until i get a kiss a good night kiss oh that's right and he thought it was from jesse but then they just put the dog's <laughs> nose on him and he goes right. and he was like oh you're such a good kisser right what and a woman that's when they were like you kissed the dog and then he's so humiliated that he runs out oh okay never watched this ever i mean did you ever even when it was like flipping channels or anything you never caught no, this is the kind of television because when it was on, this is, I was twenty. Uh -huh. So well, even watching it now makes me feel hungover. Like that's the kind of show it makes me feel sick to my stomach. Right. It makes me feel, um, it makes me feel like no one's minding the shop. It makes me feel like something bad is happening and I'm trying to avoid it. Right. Like it's everything. It 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 puts a strange primal fear into me that it reflects the time the age i really was when well i appreciate you coming over and watching this terrible television with me i loved it <laughs>